And we have seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones giving us an update of uh -huh. what has just happened. Um, Alan, you want to add about the fault, the potential fault? Um, why don't you go ahead with that part? Okay. Continue, yeah, we, I mean, it, obviously this early, we don't know for certain what's faulted on. You confirm that by actually seeing it in the field. We don't know whether this would have been large enough to actually create a, a field expression. There are a lot of faults in the region. Uh, one is called the San Cayetano Fault. Uh, it's uh, capable of quite large earthquakes, and it seems to be the most likely association. Um, the uh, movement during the earthquake was what's called a thrust movement with one side up and over the other. That's consistent with the San Cayetano Fault. Um. And the other thing I would just add is uh, we we're really happy all systems uh, were running as they should be despite the rains and, and whatnot. So uh, we had a very uh, positive outcome, I'd say, just the way that the network is running. Uh, no problems, everything uh, working as it should. And, and there was a shake alert warning that went out, right, Alan? Yeah, in fact, I received that uh, the, the, the shake alert uh, on my phone. So yes, I definitely heard it and then felt it a few seconds afterwards. So. Uh, I got the warning ahead of time. Hmm. I didn't get to feel it. Okay. <laughs> um, John, I think that's that's really sort of, unfortunately, at this early stage, that's uh, the main information that we have, but why don't we facilitate some questions? And if you see the comment from John, raise your hand if you have questions. All right, we're watching a, a live, basically, uh, update that Lu Dr. Lucy Jones is giving us uh, right now through uh, her web camera. Oh, you've got what we've got at this point, or you want to uh, just come back in an hour? Or Well, hopefully... Lucy, if... can you explain uh, there the, we go. the conditions that we're experiencing uh, with the, the tropical storm and its relationship to what's happening underground? Okay, there is no particular relationship between the, the weather and what's happening underground. Um, <laughs> remember, people always try to make patterns. Usually they call it hot weather because that's what we had for the Whittier Narrows earthquake. Um, but uh, uh, there's really no way that what's going on in the storm would be affecting the rate of earthquakes. It's, of course, we notice the patterns when they, when they occur together. And I think actually the biggest impact would be what it might be doing to the network operation. Um, but it sounds like uh, we, we aren't having outages from the uh, from the storm at all, Alan? No, and in fact, the, fa the fact that, you know, shake alerts working, people were getting alerts uh, ahead of time. Like I said, I received an alert. Um, I think it uh, shows that everything's working just as it should be. So, John, we have a question from KCBS. Can you unmute them or, yeah. Dr. Jones, hi, it's yes. uh, Pat Harvey and Juan Fernandez Hello there. here. So glad that you're, you're here with us today and giving us this important information. Is there a way that you can remind us of the probability? Because we've been getting a lot of people oh. asking questions about, okay, does this mean that there are gonna be bigger earthquakes or, 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 or not? Or have we seen well, the largest? You, you've said this before, so if you can give us a reminder. That's that's a great point. Uh, yes, as we always say, if we could tell you that whether or not there was a bigger one coming, we'd all be a lot richer than we are. Uh, uh, there is nothing about an earthquake that tells us it has to be a foreshock. And the fact that we were having these little ones and twos over the last day didn't really tell us anything about this. Um, but every earthquake has about a 5% chance of being followed by something larger. And so um, that would apply in this situation as well. So a one in 20 chance that this is not the largest one. So a 95% chance that it is, okay? Um, but we should be aware that it's possible. And if you get larger than a 5.1, you know, then we're starting to get to earthquakes that are, um, have some pretty serious consequences. Uh, Dr. Jones, I saw your, your tweet earlier. You were saying that uh, we may have seen a foreshock of a 2.5 yesterday. So looking back now, can you sort of make a connection between what we've experienced just a few minutes ago to Saturday? Well, yes. There, so between, I, I'm, I'm looking at the Caltech catalog right now, mm -hmm. uh, starting the earliest one, there was a 2.1 that happened uh, at 4.30, no, 3.30 in the morning. Uh, Saturday morning. And between then and the five, there were uh, over a dozen earthquakes. The 2.5 happened um, last night. So, uh, 
yes, and we, we say there's a connection because they're essentially in the same place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's uh, I see. pretty okay. much the definition of it. And uh, within, a, within 10 kilometers, we see a really strong uh, correlation where you have more earthquakes right after another earthquake. More than just a few kilometers away, it tends to go mm -hmm. away. So there was a connection with the previous one. Now we've had the 5.1 mm -hmm. that sort of reset the, the uh, numbers of what's the largest earthquake. Uh, and it also then will have a 5% chance of being followed by something mm -hmm. bigger. As, as we've said, it's, it's already had uh, three magnitude three, or excuse me, six earthquakes of at least magnitude three aftershocks just mm -hmm. in the um, a half hour since it happened. Something that was very interesting that you said uh, earlier that I picked up on, and maybe you can add a little more to it. You were saying that scientists now actually have to go into the field to confirm the fault that this uh, quake uh, came from, that's to me that's very interesting. You actually have to go out there. We always say it's centered here or it's located there, but to be precise, it's actual field work. Well, no. I, so we know where it is. Uh huh. That's that's that we get from Allen's instruments. Right? Okay. Correlating it with a specific fault, fault, the final confirmation is really going to be because you see that there's movement on that fault, and that only happens with the largest earthquakes. And I'm sure, you know, this is this is borderline as to whether you'd expect to have any surface expression at all. It's just not it's not quite big enough to be sure you have that. Mm -hmm. But by this level, mostly there's, you know, some geologists will be out there and look and see whether the San Cayetano shows shows any movement. But I mean, the definition of a fault is a physical thing on the ground. It's not something you do with it. You know, the definition of the fault comes from what you see on the ground. And the final confirmation is always going to be that you see that the fault itself moved. Alan, do you want mm -hmm. to comment any more on that? Um, no, I think that's, uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would, the only thing I'd add also is uh, we've already even recorded up to, I think, 22 aftershocks MC. So we're, it's, it seems to be a very yeah. active sequence in, in that wow. sense, but only a few of those, like most of them are much smaller magnitudes so haven't been felt. Um, but it looks like this is, uh, the aftershock sequence is quite active. Yeah. Uh, I see there's a question that's on the, uh, chat has come from KABC. Yeah. This is yeah. not the first time that the alerts have worked. Alan. Oh, yeah. Do you want me just to go ahead? Okay. So yeah. the question is, is this the first time that the alerts have worked? Uh, no, this is not the first time. We've had a, a number of times now in our successes with the work, both with the alerts, both in Southern and Northern California. Dr. Jones, can you still hear us, KCBS? Now I'm hearing you, yes. Um, what I find very fascinating, uh, Dr. Jones and Pat, is that it seems like with every earthquake we have, at least for us non-scientists, we learn a little bit more of, of how things work. Is that the same with you? I'd say a big enough earthquake, we, you know, every earthquake has something to teach us. Mm -hmm. um, the smaller ones we see so often, we, you mm -hmm. know, you start, there's, you start running out of new things to learn. Um, <laughs> this location is interesting. I did do a quick search through the catalog, and there haven't, this is the first time we've had a magnitude five since 1932 in exactly this location. Um, there, back, and it's even within the Ventura um, Basin, it's just not that common. Uh, in 1941, there was a magnitude five and a half just a little bit west of here. Uh, and some of the Northridge aftershocks were just a bit east of here. This is sort of an extension of the same fault that produced the Northridge earthquake. Um, and that's really it uh, in, the, in the last 90 years within this region. So that part's interesting. It's a place where we see lots of faults. If you look at any of the earthquake hazard maps, there will always be a big red blob over the Ventura Basin because there's so many faults that we can see at the surface and we can see that they've been moving pretty rapidly. And when we use GPS, we can also see that that basin is closing relatively rapidly. So all the hazard maps have a pretty high hazard for the region. But this is the first time that we've had a five, um, you know, right here, you know, 1941, we have a, a five and a half that was a little bit farther west. Dr. Jones, I know you had mentioned earlier that this, no one can predict in terms of the weather, how that's going to relate to earthquakes. Mm -hmm. But I do want to ask you, since we have 
had quite a bit of rain and even going from those those winter storms earlier this year and then with this recent rain, does that have any effect on the ground? Um, not demonstrably. Okay. Um, that's a, you know, we've, we've looked for the pattern and when, you know, the one way it could is that uh, the pressure in the water in the ground does affect faults. If you go and build a great big reservoir and significantly increase the, the pore pressure, it's called, the pressure in the fluids in the ground, mm -hmm. you can set off earthquakes. That's a well-known fact. Okay. Right? Now, can the rain change that? You have to have a pretty large change in the water table to see it happening. And um, we've, as I said, we've looked for this pattern because you, there is this sort of theoretical marginal potential for it happening, um, but we don't actually, and nobody's been able to demonstrate that it happens more often. We need to remember that the most human response we have is we wanna find a pattern. Because if we can find a pattern, then we can say, I'm safer at other times that that pattern isn't there. Mm -hmm. So we have a pretty strong uh, psychological drive <laughs> to, to look for those patterns and try to find them. And the, the point of science is to do the statistics and see whether the pattern's real. And so far, nobody's been able to really um, confirm that pattern. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Jones, uh, what's next? What do we look out for in the coming days? Some more earthquakes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so clearly we've got an aftershock, an active aftershock sequence. As Alan said, there's over 20 aftershocks just in the first half hour. Six of them have been above magnitude three. So this is, this is a, a significant sequence. And when you're having a lot of earthquakes, you tend to have earthquakes. We know the rate at which they de decay. And there will be more magnitude threes today. There could easily be a magnitude four, just sort of in your average distribution of aftershocks you expect. That, you know, having a magnitude four aftershock to a magnitude five is sort of the average. Um, but uh, it should be dying off with time, um, unless it triggered a bigger one, and then we'll start the whole thing over again. 5% chance that that could be what we're looking at. 95% chance it will just keep, uh, continue to be driving, dry, um, dropping off. I will say though, 5% chance of a bigger earthquake is larger than our background rate. It's still small, Right? Mm -hmm. Only a 5% chance, but that's way more than we usually have. So think about what it's, you know, I like to use these to just say, probably it's all going away, but isn't this a great time to think about what you've been doing? And actually, if you combine <laughs> it with a tropical storm, a lot of the things that you should be doing right. yes. to be ready for an earthquake are things that are good to be doing <laughs> to be ready mm -hmm. for a tropical storm. You know, the, what would you do hits? if the power went out? And uh, do you have, you know, do you need to be able to go to the grocery store? Well, you shouldn't be running out now during the middle of the storm to be doing that. Think about it, though, and maybe in the next few days when the weather clears up, you might be wanting to get those supplies. And I, of course, say that the most important thing you can do is be talking with your neighbors about how you can help each other in a disaster. And this would be a great time and a great opportunity. You've got both a tropical storm and an earthquake to talk about. Great way to get the conversation started. Yeah, no we kidding. were hoping, we were mm -hmm. telling our viewers, uh, Dr. Jones, yesterday that uh, hopefully they had their kits ready. And when we said kits, we meant earthquake preparedness because that's what we've been hearing over the years if you li live in Southern California. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the same thing you need in terms of a, a tropical storm that just happens to come, uh, oh, what, every 100 years or so. And right. also, of course, they have those flashlights ready. Batters. I remember the magnitude fives happened in Cali Southern California, like on an average, about once a year. The last one we had in Southern California was two years ago. Uh, so we, we have another question now from uh, Jonathan Gonzalez at, at, at KNBC. Yeah, this is Jonathan and, and Kathy here at KNBC. We wanted to talk about um, the early warning system. We did get you know, word that the alert system went out, and we apologize if this is something that you've already talked about, but can you talk about the success of that? We've got multiple reports that that alert went out uh, just seconds before the quake, and was it exactly what you know, was expected to happen? Alan. Sure, go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and speak to that. Yes, um, yeah, the, the alert works. Uh, it looks like flawlessly, and uh, we're now starting to get used to this now that we've had the, the alert running for a few years. Uh, we've had alerts set out already in, in Southern California, uh, I think just one or two times, but in Northern California now, uh, we've had alerts go out uh, a handful of times. So 
Um, it, we're, you know, it's a new service that we're starting to get used to uh, as Californians. Uh, that this is you know a thing now we can have on our phones, um, and so there's a couple different services. One is you can download apps, um, and there's a few different apps that are possible to download. Berkeley has one that's called MyShake, um, but there's also it's something called Via, uh, which is just an automatic uh, alert that comes to your phone whether or not you have an app. Uh, and so there's different ways to kind of receive that on on phones. Was there another question long about that? I would. I guess that the other thing that's interesting just with the services, it's not just apps. It, obviously, nobody's in school today. It's a Sunday, but uh, they also work with uh, you know LA County uh, school districts and other school districts. And so I think that uh, there's a lot of um, outreach and with hospitals and other areas also uh, with particular different alerting schemes. But you know, on a Sunday, it's going to be a little bit different. A lot. Uh, we only we're probably getting most of our alerts on phones. We have, we have time for one more question before we're going to uh, end the conference right now. Is there another question? KTLA has a question. Let me uh, go to them right now. If you could unmute, uh, we'd love to have you ask your question. Otherwise, we need to move on to our, our next uh, question. We can come back, Lucy, while we're waiting. Uh, while we're waiting, Lucy, could you just remind folks um, what it is that uh, this Earthquake tells us about uh, what happens across Southern California. This was in, north of Los Angeles in Ojai, but what does the picture look like across Southern California as it relates to earthquake faults and risk? Uh, you're talking about just the background of faults? Correct. I think, uh, you know, it's very easy to think that the only problem is the San Andreas Fault. Um, in the Bay Area, you can get away with that. There's maybe the San Andreas, the Hayward, and the Calaveras. Here in Southern California, we have a couple of hundred faults large enough to produce at least a magnitude six. Um, as I said, there's, there is a fault, there's actually, there's a large cluster of faults in the Ventura Basin. Uh, this one is closest, the earthquake's closest to the San Cayetano Fault, but because there's so many, it's hard to be sure if, if it's really that one or not. And um, uh, Ventura is one of the strongest concentration of faults, but those same faults extend along the northern side of the Los Angeles Basin. So they extend over and include the fault that produced the 94 Northridge earthquake. And then you've got all of the faults that are the, the front of the mountains here. So the, the Sierra Madre Fault or the Duarte Fault, I mean, Eagle Rock Fault, we can start going through the names and convince you how many of them we have. Um, and of course, then there's others that, that go down through the basin as well. So I think it's important for people to remember that we have a lot of choices and, um, uh, even though the San Andreas is our largest and our fastest moving, and therefore, as an individual fault, we'll have more than others, because there's so many other choices, the next earthquake is often not on the San Andreas. Uh, well, Dr. Let's go to KTLA. They're, they're ready to go for us. Well, Dr. Jones, we wanted to thank you for having KKL News as part of your conversation. We appreciate uh, you answering our yep. questions. Always very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.